where does it converge? To whatever A is? To whatever A, okay. So we yesterday we introduced this word introduced to the series word converge to to A over A over one minus r. One minus r. Very good. What about if the radius, if the uh, the r ratio, a common ratio bigger than or equal to one, then it will multiply by one minus r. What about one of? Wait. So we have this yesterday. Um, when it's bigger than r, when it's, when the ratio is bigger than or equal to one, you add all of those terms together. Does it converge or diverge? You asking about the second part? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, the second part. It diverges. Oh, okay, it diverges. Okay, this is what we discussed yesterday, and then we also introduced the uh, diverge, diverge test or nth term test. Okay, so if First, we have discussed if n equals 1 to infinity, the series a n, if it converges. If it converges, then the limit n goes to infinity a n, this equals 0. If limit n goes to infinity of the nth term a n not equal 0, then A from zero to infinity, a n diverge. Okay, so we um, we stopped here. We have here yesterday. We give several. We have discussed several examples. If the nth term not equal zero, then the series will diverge. Diverge means either is means it goes to infinity, or negative infinity, or it alternative comes back and forth values, but never converges to one point. That means diverge, okay? And I also said that something in the red mark here, I emphasize this one. A lot of students sometimes always make a mistake here. I'll use a different color again. If limit n goes to infinity, a n equals zero, okay? It does not mean the series n from 1 to infinity a n converge. You can't use this to, to test it. Okay, it's, this is just a divergence test. It's not a convergence test. Okay, so if even we got limit n a n equal 0, it does not mean the series converge. I'll also give you an example. The example is n from 1 to infinity, 1 over n. Okay, we're going to discuss this later today, and uh, this is actually a harmony series, a p-series p equals 1. Okay, we, we I already told you yesterday, this one actually diverge, but you can tell that limit n goes to infinity, 1 over n equals 0. Even the nth term equals 0, it does not give you the series converge, okay? So don't get the converge. All right, today we're going to continue with our convergence test. We have not discussed, uh, we only have, well, yeah, we did have a convergence series, convergence series yesterday, the geometric series when the ratio r is less than one. You have the geometric bigger than zero, less than one, you have the geometric series converge, okay? Today we're going to continue with our second test, which is integral test. Okay. <laughs> so, what is integral test for a series n from one to infinity a n the series a n if we define fn equals an, 
And if we have three conditions, first, if f x is positive, if the function is positive and uh, continuous, Uh, decreasing okay. uh, decreasing positive continuous decreasing for x is bigger than or equal to 1 the reason we have x is bigger than or equal to 1 is because um, in some book it has x bigger than or equal to k well I think that's uh, okay too in our book it says x is bigger than or equal to 1 because n starts from 1 to infinity so x is the variable of the function because the n starts from 1 so we make them the same n equals 1 to infinity x big, equals bigger than or equal to 1 okay as long as I have you can check it's positive continuous and decreasing okay so we have the series a n and uh, the integral 1 to infinity f x dx both converge or diverge it means if I have the integral converge then the series converge if the integral diverge then the series diverge so they both diverge and converge at the same time. Okay, why do we why do we use this? It was much easier because we it's, it was much easier for us to find the integral if it's continuous function. We find the antiderivative. It was much easier for us to find the um, antiderivatives than to de determine the convergence convergence or divergence. Okay. So let's look at an example. This one, this example we have discussed it yesterday now we have have a test to prove it why is series 1 over m why is this series diverge okay why do we have this diverge now we look at this example just have this one we we'll prove it here okay for series m from 1 to infinity 1 over n so let's see for this series we test if it converge or diverge. So first, define define f x equals one over x. Okay, we define f x equals one over x. Let's check. Let's check because the f n fn equals 1 over n, you can, you can tell that the series fn equals an is 1 over n, so I have fx equals 1 over x. It's very easy for you to, um, to replace the function. You just write down fn equals 1 over n, you see n is the variable here, so n is not continuous, but now we, we, we need a continuous function to take the antiderivatives. So you have fx equals 1 over x. Okay. So replace the n by x, you can tell it's same form. We have fx equals 1 over x. Let's check three conditions first. Okay, for x is bigger than or equal to 1. Since n is starting from 1 to infinity, let's check start from for x is bigger than or equal to 1. We'll check three conditions first. fx equals 1 over x. Since x is positive, 1 is positive. You have two positive things division. So this one is positive for x is bigger than equal to 1. Second, fx equals 1 over x is continuous. And thirdly, we have the function is decreasing. Now I have a question here. How do I determine if a function is decreasing or increasing? Question. How do I know? How do I determine? Okay. How do I determine if this function is decreasing or increasing? I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask a student here. Okay. Just call a student. So I give you a function. How do you tell me? How can you tell me if it's decreasing or increasing? 
So I'm going to call a student here. All right. Um, Eric, could you please tell me how can I determine a function is decreasing or increasing? Is it like if its limit is approaching a value or if it's converging? Okay, well, um, that's converging, diver divergent. No, we are comparing comparing the function. Oh, wait, wait a moment. We are looking for if the function fx is increasing or decreasing. Okay, I'll give you a little bit of hint. In calculus 1, very good. Just take the derivative. Okay, in calculus 1, we, after you learn the derivatives, you must learn how to find the maximum, the minimum. Okay, you take the first derivative, set up equal zero, and uh, checking the increasing, decreasing interval, and draw a picture and find the maximum, minimum point. You must remember that, right? So, in order to determine a function is decreasing or increasing, we take the derivative. Okay. So, fx is 1 over x. I would like to continue ask you again, Eric, I would like to continue ask you, what is the derivative of the function fx? It's the opposite of 1 over x squared. Opposite is negative, 1 over x squared, perfect. Okay, thank you. So this is actually the next, uh, x negative 1, you take the first derivative, you get negative x, you subtract 1 power, again it's negative 2 power, so it's negative 1 over x squared. Just a quick, um, quick uh, way to tell you, okay, just a quick word. The derivative of fx is negative 1 over x squared. So now, it's very straightforward. We can tell this derivative. The derivative of the fx is negative. It's very straightforward. Okay. Because this is negative, you have 1 over x squared. x squared is positive, so the whole thing is negative. So now, I would like to ask you again, uh, Eric, if the derivative is negative, what does it mean? Does it mean? If the derivative is negative, it means it's decreasing. Very good. Thank you, Eric. If the derivative is negative, it means the function, the fx, is decreasing. So perfect. We have three conditions. First, the function is positive continuous and is decreasing. Now we can use our integral test. So which means the series 1 over n and the, and the antiderivative from 1 to infinity fx 1 over x dx they both converge or diverge. Okay. So now uh, let's look at this one. This is a improper integral. So from 1 to infinity because the up limit is infinity. Okay. So to solve an improper integral, I would like to ask a student here and tell me how do I solve this antiderivatives? This antiderivative. Okay, I'm gonna call a student here. Uh, Chase, could you please tell me how I solve this antiderivative antiderivative? Yeah, so you want to replace infinity with b Very and find limit as b across infinity. Very good. So one to b. So next. Uh, let, me let me find the antiderivative, which would be ln x. Very good. So what's next? Um. So you find ln of infinity minus ln of one. Yeah. So basically, you have a limited b goes to infinity. You have ln b minus ln one. You plug the up boundary, lower boundary into the antiderivative. You subtract it, and b goes to infinity. Obviously, ln ln function is ln function is increasing. If you draw a picture, this is y equals ln x. You can tell b goes to infinity. The ln b goes to infinity. So this one goes to infinity, and uh, we can tell. If it goes to infinity, it means this in, in this improper integral diverge. Does it make sense, everyone? Any question? 
so far so good. Okay. All right. Since we proved this integral, one of x from one to infinity, this integral diverge, then we have the according to the integral test, if we diverge, then the series also diverge. So since this one, since the integral diverge, okay, by integral test, we also have the series n from 1 to infinity, 1 over n diverges. Does it make sense? Okay. So that's why we have this n from 1 to infinity, 1 of n diverge. We have, we have, we discussed it yesterday, and we, I said, okay, this one diverge, the limit, the nth term equals zero, but it diverge. Okay. So now let's continue to look at another example. Okay, sec. Question? So like, how do we have, like, um, how do we have a quantum that both converge and diverge? Function both converge and diverge? Yeah. Okay, so it does not mean both. It means, okay, this both means, this both does not mean the function, the same function goes diverge or converge. This means if the integral fx dx diverge, if it diverge, then the series diverge. So instead of looking at the series, we're looking at the antiderivative. We're looking at the integral. So if the integral fx dx, if it converge, then n from 1 to infinity a n or it converge. This means they both go the same way. If the antiderivative converge, then the series converge. If the antiderivative diverge, then the series diverge. Yeah, does it make sense now? Okay. So it's much easier for us to look at the antiderivatives instead of just directly looking at the um, the series. Okay. Let's look at the second example. The second example. n from 1 to infinity 1 over n squared. Okay. I would like to give you two minutes. You work it by yourself. You practice by yourself. And you have, you can follow exactly the same process of the previous example. And I'm working it by yourself. And I'll call a student tell me what you got for this one. Okay? I'll give you two minutes practice. We don't have FX in Well, that's a good question. Whenever you ask a question, you have to press the button. Okay, so question is, Ian Tao ask us a question, ask me a question. We don't have an FX for this one, so you need to define FX yourself. So if you have Fn equals 1 over n squared, and then what is FX? If Fn is 1 over n, FX is 1 over x. And now if fn equals 1 over n squared, what is fx? Yes, so if fn equals 1 over n squared, then fx is 1 over x squared. So that would make it much easier. So now you, f you can follow exactly the same steps. First, you can draw a picture. A function is continuous time. Okay, this is a this is an easy function to, to determine right? one of the x squared. I will explain to the whole class how to determine continuous. Draw a picture. Since we are looking for x, only x bigger than equal to one for the rational function. We only have to look at the denominators. 
if the denominator is not zero, the, there's only, this function is not continuous only at one point. When x equals zero, it's undefined. Anything, anything anywhere else is fine. So now we look at x is bigger than equal to one, so it must be continuous. Okay, I think you probably have already finished this one. So I will call student tell me your answer, okay? Uh, I'm going to call student from Barron County. Let's see here, I'm going to call student. Andrew, could, could you please tell me what you got for this one? Okay, so you can rewrite the summation of 1 over n squared as a... Uh, You'd rewrite the summation of the one over n squared as the limit of b towards infinity. Um, you can write it as the interval too. You can write it. As okay, so do we need to check the three conditions? First, we need to check three conditions, right? Yeah. Okay. So first one, the function f x equals one over x squared. So we make sure this is positive. Is it positive? I mean, for x is bigger than x is bigger than equal to one, yeah, it, it should be positive. Second one, we need to know. Well, this is continuous. It's continuous everywhere yes, it's continuous everywhere except zero. Okay, a lot. Of, uh, one student from Baron County just asked me, how do we determine a function is continuous or not continuous? For a rational function, you just look at the denominator. If the denominator is not zero, it's continuous for this function, for the rational function. So whenever you have x minus, one, minus 2, you know the domain is x not equals 2. Okay, it's not continuous at x equals, equal, equals 2, but it's continuous everywhere else. This is not, it's continuous for, it's continuous for x is bigger than or equal to 1. And third, we have to make sure this function is decreasing. Okay, Andrew, could you please tell me? Why is it decreasing? Yeah. Well, if you take the limit of just that towards infinity, it's going to be one over a huge number if it's greater than one. Um, okay, so we want to, okay, to determine a function, I think you, to determine a function is decreasing or increasing, what do we do? Since, since you missed that part, I'll give you this again. The function is decreasing or increasing. Very good. Take the derivative. So the derivative of 1 over x squared is, what's the derivative of 1 over x squared? Negative 1 over x oh, cube. cube. Okay, very good. So x is positive, 1 is positive, we have negative here. We can tell this derivative. The derivative is positive or negative. Is negative. Since the derivative is negative, so we know the fx is decreasing. Before you use the before you use the integral test, you always have to check the um, conditions to use it. You have to have the fx is decreasing and uh, it's positive. All right, so now <coughs> we can use the integral test. We check the antiderivative from one to infinity, one of x squared dx. Q continue. Yeah. 
and tell me, Andrew. Um, so you take the integral of that, which should be negative x to the negative 1. Okay, we have to, this is an improper integral. Take the limit of b towards infinity. Okay. And then here, uh, limit from infinity of b to 1. 1 to b. Yeah. Uh, and then you take the integral of 1 over x squared, which is, if you solve that, it's negative uh, x to the negative 1. So is negative x. Negative 1 over x. 1 over x. Very good. Okay. And then you, and then you just plug in infinity. Limit because to infinity. Yeah. Then you get b minus one. Negative one over b yeah. minus uh, one over one. One over one. Of negative one over x. Yeah, plus one. So what do we got? So then you uh, plug in b. Mm -hmm. Plug infinity into b, and if you look at it, it's one over infinity, which means it's one over the number, which means it's going to tend to zero. Yes. And then minus one plus one, which is one. One. Okay. So then, what do we have? When you when you answer a question, you have you press the button, right? Well, yeah, press the button. Okay. Well, very good. So you have we have the integer one of x squared from one to infinity equals one. It means what? It means converge or divert. Uh, okay. So as okay, the decreasing mean what? Decreasing means decrease. Sorry, uh, diverge. Diverge. A serious diverge means what? It means goes to infinity. Or negative infinity, or back and forth alternatively, never converge to one point. It's converging. It's converging, yes, because it goes to one point. It doesn't matter what number it is, as long as it goes to one number, like a one finite number, it means it converge. So now we have the series. So by integral test, we have. Uh, the series n from 1 to infinity 1 of n square converge interesting why in the previous example I have the series I have look look at this series I have the series n from 1 to infinity 1 over n this diverge and the second one, we have this one, m from 1 to infinity, 1 over n square, this one converge. Okay. They're very similar, but they have one difference. What's, what is the difference if you look at these two series? The power, right? Okay. So I'll give you a Another series, since you have done this too, you can do a very, very quick estimation. Try something n from 1 to infinity, 1 over n cubed. You can do this real quick. Okay. Like, at most two minutes. You can do that. Or I can, you do it, I'll give you one minute to finish this one. You can tell me the converge diverge. Okay. It won't take you that much long, long time because you've done the previous two. It's very similar. You have to, you can use the integral test to test it. That's very quickly. It's not really hard, right? Okay, use the integral test real quick because you have done the square without the one over n should be very quick estimation. And you can tell me if it diverge or converge. Like one minute. And also, after you finish that one, I want to try this one. 1 over n to 1 half.
If we discuss with each other, that's okay too. Please feel free to discuss with each other. <laughs> okay, so I think All right, so let's look at this. We do very, very very quickly, okay? Oh, I would like to ask the student the answer first. First, this one. M from 1 to infinity, 1 over n q. So does this one diverge or converge? I'm going to call student here, okay? Um, let me see. Connor, could you please tell me if it converge or diverge? All right, I got it converges at 1 half. It converges at one half. I don't know if it's viable or not, but we can check it very quickly, okay? So, what about the second one? Still me? Yes, still you, Connor. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I didn't get that far, so I have no idea. Okay, let me ask another student. Okay, Benjamin? Have you done finish this one? Or Emma, either one, any volunteer? We finish this one, the second one? The first one, I think most of you probably got it. It's one half. The second one, you got it? I got the second one. I okay. I got, I got a diverge. Okay, a diverge. Okay. I just want to know if, if anybody get the right answer or not, okay? So now, actually, I'm going to explain it real quick. Not really spend a long time, but I'm going to explain it real quick, okay? So let's look at 1 over n cube. Let's look at 1 over n cube. I'll just leave it here. We're going to come back to here again, okay? Let's look at 1 over, one over n cube. We we'll just check fx equals 1 over x cube. First, it's positive. We we'll do real quick, okay? So first we'll check fx is positive. I think most of you should know this now. The second is continuous. That's not problem for x is bigger than equal to 1. It's, it's basically exactly the same thing as here. The only difference is the derivative is different. Okay, the de derivative of the function is... I, I need to call a student here. I would like you to tell me what's the derivative of 1 of x cubed. Okay. Uh, I'm going to call student here the derivative of 1 over x cubed. Uh, Joseph, could you please tell me what's the derivative of 1 over x cubed? Negative 3 over x squared. Negative 3 x power 4. Very good. Because we have a negative sign here, you can tell. Thank you very much. Thank you, Joseph. You have this neck. The derivative is negative. Positive, positive, negative is negative, is decreasing. So it's very quickly we can check the three conditions. We use the antiderivative 1 to infinity, 1 over x cubed, dx, or this is limit, then goes to infinity. It's repeating the previous process again. Okay. 1 to b, 1 over x cubed, dx, improper integral. So now, actually, I would like to call another student and tell me the antiderivative of 1 of x cubed. What's the antiderivative of 1 of x cubed? I'm going to call another student here. Um, Niklas, could you please tell me what's the antiderivative of 1 of x cubed? Negative 1 over 2x squared. So you got limit and goes to infinity. This derivative is 1 over... 2x square, like that. So we check ne negative. Okay, perfect. Negative. 
So you can actually do a quick change x to the negative 3 power. You add 1 on the power is x to the negative 2 power. You add 1 on the power divided by the new power is 3 negative 3 plus 1. So it's divided by negative 2. So it's negative 1 over negative 2x squared. Perfect. Okay. So now we plug the b and 1 and b into it. You got limit then goes to infinity negative 1 over 2 x goes b so b squared minus negative plug 1 into its negative 1 half so b goes to infinity is negative 1 over infinity this approach to 0 plus 1 half which is 1 half perfect 1 half I think Connor get it right Connor says it converts to 1 half thank you Connor you got it right it's 1 half converts to 1 half okay so now let's look at a 1 over x 1 over n to power 1 half which is square root of n we'll look at this one real quick the same thing 1 over x n to power 1 half you define fx equals x power 1 half and we'll check this very quickly fx is bigger than 0 second we got the function is continuous because x is always x is bigger than equal to one. We got the function is continuous at x is bigger than equal to one. Thirdly, we want to check the antiderivatives. The antiderivative of the function x to one half, x to negative one half. I would like to ask the student tell me what is the antiderivative of this function? Okay, what is the antiderivative of this one? Derivative. We want to know if it's increasing or decreasing, so we have to test the derivatives, right? So, Ian Cao, could you please tell me what's the derivative of this function? You change this one into x to negative one half power. Derivative. Okay, it should be negative one to uh, square x to Huh? Square root? No, if look, if I have x squared, you take a derivative of what? You got you subtract the one is two times x to two minus one, right? And if it's x power n, the derivative is n times x n minus one. The derivative. I mean yes. So this would be the same. You have x to negative one half. You take the derivative, you put a negative one half in the front, that's right. It's ne negative three over three. Oh, negative three halves, perfect. You just use negative one half, subtract the power again, and you look at this. I would like to ask you, is it positive or negative? One half, you can change it into x to three halves in the bottom. For x is bigger than or equal to one, we can easily tell this function, this derivative function, is also negative because it's positive positive negative straightforward negative so it's decreasing okay so we can use the integral test so from 1 to infinity 1 over x power 1 half we take the antiderivative of this function so now I would like to ask a student what is the antiderivative of x what is the antiderivative of x to 1 over x to 1 half power. I'm going to call a student here. Alright. Um, Matthew, could you please tell me what is the antiderivative of 1 over x 1 half? Uh, so you raise the power, so you get x to, or do you make x? Uh, x to the negative one half. Mm -hmm. You raise the power, you get x to one half, and then you divide by one half. So you're multiplying by two, so you get two x to one half. Very good. So you got two x one half, and is from one to b. Well, I did it too quickly, right? But it's okay. It's doing the uh, previous one. It's the exact the same thing. You change the b b into infinity. You take the antiderivative. You got this, and then. Now you plug it in, b to infinity, we got 2 times x to 1 half, which is b to 1 half, which is square root of b, 
minus plug one into here is two. So now I would like to tell me. Well, I look. I would like you to tell me again, Matthew. When B goes to infinity, what about this one? When B goes to infinity, the, the first term also goes to infinity. Very so good. It diverges. It diverges. Perfect. So now, let's go back to where we have before. 1 over n, let's say it's the first power, diverge. 1 over n squared, converge. Okay? 1 over x cubed, let's use, let me use different colors. So this two, 1 over x squared, converge. 1 over x cubed, converge. And we have 1 over we have one over one over m to first power diverge, one over n to one half power diverge. I was to ask you a question. What do you see from here? Okay. Um, so I'm guessing. It's guessing. Very good. I like that guess. Yes. Yeah, so we're going to guess. We're going to make a guess from this four. I'm going to make a gander and say, if n, if the power is very good. Okay. So Andrew says that's a very good guess. And he said if the power, if the one over n to p power, right, the power is less than equal to one, it diverge. If it's bigger than one, it converge. That's very good. Okay, it actually goes to our second part, Ethereum P series. Everyone, do you have that guess too? You agree? You all agree, right? Yes. Okay, I agree too. All right. P series. Now you see, after we do so, after we do several, after we do several uh, examples, we can be a mathematician, yeah. make a theorem, or we'll find the pattern. Oh, that must be a theorem. You got it, right? So this actually is a theorem. We do a P series. Okay. So a series of the form one of n to power p. This equals one over one to p plus one over two to p just continue n to p power <coughs> plus okay this series one of n to n to power p is a p series so when p is a positive okay p is a positive constant Most of the examples, p will be just a, uh, a number, okay? You don't have really any other variables. This one, first, this p series, the converge, if p is bigger than one, and uh, second, it diverges. If p is less than equal to one, bigger than zero. Is exactly the same conclusion you got. Okay, so that's what we do. All the mathematicians we we do several we do several examples. We we'll find the patterns. Now let's make a conclusion. Actually, we can prove it. Okay, um, we can prove it very quick, and uh, I think let let me do the real quick proof. Okay, uh, we only have three minutes. I think we can do. Let me do several examples. Okay, tomorrow we can look at the proof. Just do several examples. Tomorrow I'll give you the proof. Okay, so several examples so we can tell me quickly. It diverge your proof. Okay, I'll give you several examples. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Is, is that is this theorem is optic because we we got p less than less than one. 
Oh, oh my bad. Yes. Oh, I write it wrong. Peace. Wait, 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 wait. I think I did it wrong. Converge. Yeah. He's greater than one. He converge. Oh, yeah. It diverge when P is less than one. We had one half. You see, one half is less than one. It diverge, and uh, one is less than equal to one. It diverge. If it's greater than one, it converge. Right? Oh, okay. Sorry. All right. So now I'll just give you some example. Ask you a quick conclusion since we have this. Well, this theorem actually now is given by Andrew in our class. Okay. Everyone can make a theorem if it's right. Okay. So now we have n five over three. All right, so I'll give you several several examples. Let me tell me. Just you tell me if it converge or diverge. Okay. So three m from one to infinity. One n to point nine five. Okay. Number three. N from one to infinity, one over n squared minus one over n cubed. All right, so uh, I'll just call student and tell me the answer because we have this one, this conclusion here. I'll pro we will look at the proof, the detail proof of, the, of this P series tomorrow, like first uh, five minutes. Look at the P series proof. Okay, although we have a very very good. Um, condition here. We have four examples. It will it really support our conclusion, but we really need to prove it for any p number, not just look at this. Oh, this is the one. Okay, so we're going to do the proof why it's like that. Okay, although we do have very a lot of examples supported now. So now the example one. Let's just assume this is right now. Okay. The first one, the p this p series. I would like a student tell me. Um. I have not which student. Okay, Alex, could you please tell me the first one? It converges or diverge? It converges. It converges. Why? Because p is greater than one. P is greater than one. P is three five over three bigger than one. It converges. Perfect. Thank you, Alex. Uh, second student, Cal, could you please tell me the second one? It diverges because p is less than one. Very good. Everyone got it. So p is 0 0.95, it diverge because it's less than 1. Perfect. Thank you, Cal. Third example. Uh, I'm going to call a student, another student who I have not caught yet. Uh, April, could you please tell me the third one? Is Cambodia diverge? Can you use another speaker? That one sometimes causes problems. Thank you. Uh, it converges? It converges. Why? Both converge, perfect. Because p equals two, it converge, and p equals three, it converge. Both of them converge. Then if you subtract them, they still converge. Very good. Thank you very much. I'll see you tomorrow, and we will continue this P series real quick, and um, I will continue with the next one. Thank you very much.